How do you find out about animals in need of help? Do you have a network, the police, question mark? Great question. And today here in the rescue zoo, we're gonna answer that question. And later on we have a, let's just call it an animal um, surprise. And today's animal surprise may or may not be um, utterly amazing, if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, to start off the question about how do we get the rescue animals here to the rescue zoo or more, how do we, you know, discover the new rescue animals? Basically, it, it can depend many different cases. So, first of all, we work with rescue centers around uh, Europe, around the world. We, we do get emails from around the world, but mostly from Europe. And we work with places called transit places, where... Basically, what they do is they physically go out and rescue the animals and then they call us up, who is known to be a permanent staying home. And as a permanent staying home, you get these calls and in many cases, with very short notice, you get a call saying, can you take a carcal? Can you take a primate? Can you take really going at it with that toy can you take any of these specific exotic animals and you need to have an enclosure and it needs to it needs to be in basically last week so incredibly stressful situations to being a, a staying home and also the reason why some of the enclosures in the start at least might look a bit different and, and what do i need, mean by that by you know the enclosures looking different so when you're building an enclosure in about a week, you're obviously not going to be able to build these monstrous, uh, huge, golden, um, concrete enclosures that you might see in a more traditional zoo. And we can also say that we don't really want that kind of style. We like to build natural materials. materials. Um, but with that said, it doesn't mean that the animals don't get an enclosure that they need. Because if we are building a quicker one, we are going to always build bigger and better and different if it doesn't, you know, go up to the standard of the needs of the specific animal in the long term. But, you know, when the animals come in first here at the rescue zoo, it's always important to notice that they all have different needs. But in many cases, bigger is not always better. And a lot of them need smaller spaces because imagine you were a animal that has been through medical testing and been sitting in small confined spaces for your entire life. If you are thrown into a huge enclosure, that would be a very stressful um, psychological, um, you know, experience. So, in many cases, the quarantine area with smaller enclosures, where they gradually get more and more space, is the way to go. Um, and here we mean they start in an indoor enclosure, then they have an outdoor enclosure, and then they have their final enclosure here in the rescue zoo. Some of these rescue animals. Well, all these rescue animals. That's sort of how it goes when they, they get and arrive here to the rescues. So, to continuing on your question, where do the animal come from? They come from rescue places that is known to be transit places. It could be the police or other organizations working here in the rescue or zoo's uh, location, I wanted to say, like here in Denmark. So, it could also be private people who anonymously want to drop off some of these illegal animals that they have obtained. Um, but yeah, Different organizations, police, um, private people who willing, willingly arrive here at the rescue zoo anonymously and give them hand over the animals. It is time for the arrival of the two new utterly amazing small clawed Asian otters. So, about last year, we had these two surplus animals arrive here at the rescue zoo. And I just discovered that I actually haven't really shown the footage. And I figured, now that we were talking about where the animals were coming from, it was a perfect time to show one of the cases of where the animals arrive here to the rescue zoo. Because these two animals were not rescue arrival in the traditional sense because it's not because these animals has been through abuse but they're coming for a tradition from a traditional zoo where the animals were surplus animals and that means there's no space in the tradition or in the main groups at the specific zoo so the animals were to be put down when they couldn't find a space for them so that's one of the cases where it's not directly animals who's been through abuse but it's still rescue animals because we're saving them from being put down 
So here is the two new amazing animals and I hope you enjoyed today's video.